In this video, we will look a bit behind the scenes of my personal dashboard. On our community Discord server, a question that gets asked often is, what does this sensor or that sensor from the dashboard code do? So I thought I'd combine a few things into one video that are too small to do a full video on it, but are useful nonetheless. So this video might be a little bit different to the other ones. Let me know in the comments if it was helpful to you. I will share some of my favorite not so well known integrations like the manual alarm control panel, universal media player and relative brightness light group. And we will talk about some of my template sensors that are used for the dashboard but haven't mentioned in any other videos. For that I will show you how to count things and how to automatically check on all of your battery sensors. Let's start. The first integration I want to show you is the manual alarm control panel. It's a core integration of Home Assistant and you can find it in the documentation. Right now, you can only set it up via YAML, but it's actually quite powerful. There's also a template alarm control panel, which you can set up via the UI. However, I think this one is a bit more useful. Let's open our Home Assistant and set it up real quick. I am using the file editor add-on to edit my configuration file. I will copy in the YAML code and explain what it does. It's actually quite simple. We add an alarm control panel, the platform is manual. Underneath, we have some settings for it. We set a name and a code. As an example, I just took 123456, but you should use a real code. Below that, we can specify different arming times. Basically, what I'm doing is I set the arming time to 10 seconds, so when it changes states, I can leave the house, for example. You can change this to your individual needs. The delay time is the time it takes before the alarm control panel gets triggered and the trigger time is how long the alarm control panel stays in the triggered state. Underneath I set some more specific times to each state. When arming to home or night, I don't want to have any delay, so I set the arming time and delay time to zero. For disarmed, I set the trigger time to zero as I don't want the alarm control panel to be triggered when disarmed. Let's save the configuration and restart home system real quick. We now have a new alarm control panel entity that we can use to set up our own security panel. To give you two quick ideas what you can do with this, let's add two quick automations. If you use present detection, you can automatically arm and disarm your alarm control panel by checking the state of your home zone. If the state is higher than zero, we want to set it to home. If it's zero, we want to arm it. Once the alarm control panel is armed, you can set up an automation that triggers the alarm control panel when motion is detected. Make sure you add a condition that this only happens if the alarm control panel is armed. Lastly, we can add an automation that notifies us when the alarm control panel is triggered and just like that we have created our own security system. Let's move on to my most used template sensors, which is used to count things. This one we can add via the UI. Let's add a new helper and add a template sensor that will count how many lights are on. The easiest way is to use this code. It looks at all the states in the light domain, checks if their state attribute equals on and counts them. As you can see, right now I have five lights on. However, I like to have a bit more control over it, as sometimes devices have light entities that are not actual lights in my home. So what I do is I create a group for all my lights. We can do that real quick via the UI. And once I have this group, instead of counting all the lights in my home assistant, I just check the ones in the group. This makes it much easier to control which lights are included and which ones are not. I use the same principle for a bunch of different sensors, like counting how many chores are on or how many windows are open. While on the topic of light groups, Here's a custom integration from Hux that is so useful I don't know why it's not the core functionality of Home Assistant. The integration is called Relative Brightness Light Group. You can find the link in the description. So many of you might know this, but if you are using a light group to change the brightness, the change is applied to all of the lights. This is almost never what I want to do when using a light group. I only want to change the lights which are turned on. Relative Brightness Light Group fixes this problem, and it's quite easy to install. Let's copy the link to the GitHub repository, go to Hux and add it as a custom repository. Make sure you choose integration. Now we can download the new integration. We have to restart Home Assistant for it to work, so let's do that real quick. 
Once Home Assistant is restarted, we can use our new light group basically the same way we can use the built-in light group. However, we need to do it via YAML. So let's go to our configurations YAML and add another light group for all the lights. We only have to specify the platform, relative brightness light group, the name, give it a unique ID, and then add all the entities that we want to have in this light group. A little note, you can't use this group to count entities as it doesn't work. I just created another normal light group for the counting part. Let's save it and restart Home Assistant again. We now have a new light group that will change the brightness of its entities relatively. In my opinion, this makes much more sense. Okay, let's add another template sensor. This time, we want to check if any batteries need to be changed. It works very similar to counting entities, but it is a bit more complex. In the state field, we will first define a new variable called low batteries. This looks at all sensor states. Now we need to filter out the entities we need to check. So we check if device class is defined and if device class equals battery. Then we map the entity IDs and the states select all states that are numbers and map them as floats. Now we select them again with a limit of 5, so only if the float is 5 or below it gets selected. Lastly, we list all the remaining states. To make the binary sensor work, we now have to return a boolean. So we count low batteries and check if it's higher than 0. If yes, this means there are batteries below 5%, so the binary sensor is turned on. We can use this sensor on our dashboard or in an automation, for example, to send us a notification when battery is empty. The good part is, if you add a new device with a battery sensor, it is automatically checked. The last integration I want to show you is actually a core integration as well. It's called the Universal Media Player. Here you can see the documentation. It's actually quite extensive and lets you basically create your own media players. But how I use it is to combine multiple media players into one. For example, I create a music player called Music for all my music assistant entities that I can use on my dashboard instead of the individual ones. I also have media players that combine all the media players from each room. Think of it as groups for media players. To edit, we have to go into the configuration file again and just add a few lines of code. We add a media player, the platform is universal, we set a name and a unique ID and under children we can add the media players we want to combine. That's it! Now we just have to save and restart Home Assistant and the new media player can be used like any other media player. That's all for this YouTube video. I hope that you liked the video and learned something new that you can use for your Home Assistant setup. If you want to use any of the code I showed in the video, you can find a link in the description to my Gumroad. And if you need any help with setting up your own dashboard, feel free to join our Discord channel. We already have quite an active community of people who are happy to help each other. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos in which I create more custom cards, show off cool hugs cards and a tour of my personal dashboard. I also plan on doing another livestream soon, so subscribe and hit the bell to not miss it. Thanks for watching.